Wawa Gadero. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the proud daughter of Kikuyu Kenyan immigrants. My connection to the land is an ancestral one. You see, my family comes from a long line of farmers. But it wasn't until I was a teenager that I began to understand the climate crisis as a justice issue. It didn't take long to notice that communities and people who look like me were missing from climate narratives and leadership. So, I did something about it. In 2021, I started the nonprofit Black Girl Environmentalist. Where can Oh, I'm so excited for this right now. That was a clip of a short film by our next guest, Wawa Gatheru, in partnership with Series Inc. And Wawa has made it her mission to empower black women in the climate sector through her foundation, Black Girl Environmentalist. And she's joining me right now, right next to me. Also, you have an amazing story. You're also a really cute kid. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Those you. pictures were adorable. Um, okay, so tell me a little bit about, in that clip that we just saw, you talked about your heritage. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that and how that plays a role in what you're doing right now and why you wanted to create this foundation. Yeah, like I said in the video, I come from a long line of farmers. I'm a very proud Kenyan American woman. And from a young age, my parents really instilled in me this deep love and appreciation for the planet. So now as a Gen Z climate activist and the founder of Black Girl Environmentalist, I get to contribute my voice every single day to mobilizing the next generation of climate leaders of color because our planet is so beautiful and we have to do what we can to protect it. I love this. And I feel like you must be paving the way for a lot of people in in that generation in particular, but also when it comes to diversity and inclusion and making sure you get people involved in that. What has that experience been like for you and what has been the feedback too? Yeah, I wanna take a step back actually and really give people an understanding of what the landscape is. Mm -hmm. So while people of color make up nearly 40% of the US population, people of color don't exceed a 12 to 16% green ceiling of representation in the climate movement. So even though we're here and we're actually oh disproportionately gosh. being impacted mm -hmm. by the climate crisis, we're actually not in leadership positions. So Black Girl Environmentalists and the work that I do is really about resourcing that next generation early career youth that are really, really mobilized and understand the gravity of the climate crisis, but may not know how to take the next steps to really harness their voices and really contribute in a meaningful way to solve this thing. I'm so impressed. Um, I wanna talk about the leadership. You and what you've been doing has earned you uh, multiple publications and recognition in so many different avenues. What's that like been for you? And also, I mean, weren't you just on a cover with Billie Eilish? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was super, super cool. So in January 2023, um, Billie Eilish um, really, really um, decided to um, invite seven other climate activists, including myself, to join her on the first ever digital cover of American Vogue. And it was a really incredible experience. I actually had just lost my paternal grandmother, mm -hmm. and um, she was one of the people that really got me interested in climate advocacy and using my voice. So it was an incredible way for me to really harness that moment and really lean into the narratives and wisdom that she had passed along with me. So it was a, such a privilege and one of the <laughs> coolest things I've ever been a part of. That's amazing. Um, I want to talk about one of, one of the things that I think is really crucial is just making sure we reach the kiddos. So let's talk about your um, organization and how it's doing that. Yeah, so we specifically work with um, black women and black gender expansive youth. So that looks like high schoolers, that looks like undergraduates, that looks like recent graduates. We find that really getting people when they're young is so important. It really is. Right, when mm -hmm. you're young, you have this imagination, you have this, um, feeling inside of you that you can use your voice. And I believe that we can. I think oftentimes when we get older, we have people tell us that, you know, maybe we're being naive or we're being too emotional. And I reject that. I think we should really be harnessing the power that young people have in our voices. And to me, it's actually leaning on this historical um, presence of young people. Young people have led virtually every social movement. So right now, young people, we need to be mobilizing our voices and coming together to build collective power to use our voices to solve the climate crisis. I feel so inspired right now. Um, you're incredible. And I also feel like when you talk about the youth, they have someone to look up to and they see, because, you know, parents do as best as they can, but some Sometimes you don't really have all the avenues or answers or resources, so it's always nice to have someone else fill that role and offer that mentorship, but also offer that moment where kids can say, wait a minute, 
mm -hmm. I didn't know about this. I, I'm interested in this. I want to move forward with it too. So I think what you're doing is incredible. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here. Let everybody know where they can find more information on you and um, what you're doing. Yes, so you can find more about Black Girl Environmentalist at our website at blackgirlenvironmentalist.org and on Instagram. And make sure to follow, support, and reach out if you want to collaborate or join the movement. That's great. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. And congratulations again. Yeah. All right, we're going to put all of this up on our website, too, at kcalnews.com slash the morning wrap.